Hey there, welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel, and in this video we are going to create an adventure. So I've done this before and I'm also working on a mega dungeon if you're following that. Um, but I wanted to create some individual adventures, some modules if you would. Um, these can be inserted into the mega dungeon campaign, of course, or they can be run independently. And we're going to kind of follow the, the BX way of creating it. Now, I made another video about this a while back, and I made a, a video where, uh, an adventure, I should say, where the, there was giant ants as the as the uh, the main monster, and we kind of created that, and I'll put a link to that stuff. But what I wanted to do was go through the BX book and create the various different types of adventure that they talk about to kind of give you an idea of how you can do it on the fly. Now, a lot of times, when you're, and you'll probably hear this advice a lot, when you're going to make an adventure, you know, be inspired. You see a movie you like, you read a book, you comics, whatever, you know, maybe even a piece of art, and you think, hey, I'm going to make an adventure based on that. And that's a great way to do it. However, sometimes we can do it very procedurally. And I think that's where BX is very strong. And one of the reasons why a lot of retro clones, including OSC, obviously, is based on it. So let me just go to the BX book here for a second. So we're in the section on creating uh, adventures. And we can see here, and again, if you if you were to um, watch the other video, I go through this whole thing. But I'm just going to hit on the points that are important right now, which is, we got choose a scenario. So it's giving us 10 scenarios to choose from um, or roll on, which is what we're going to do. And then it's also going to, and it gives us a little background of what it could be. So let's, that's my book. Let's roll on this chart. Okay, one. Okay, exploring the unknown. So the party is hired to map an unknown territory. The area might once have been familiar uh, and is now overrun or destroyed. A strange tower might mysteriously appear overnight in a familiar area. And it gives some examples of dungeon modules, you know, that the TSR has made that are like that. So that's cool. <laughs> that's a good, nice, simple one, right? That's a good basic one. Exploring, right? That's basically what adventurers do. Uh, let's see what we got here. Four. Okay, I'm going to roll the location. Let's see, four. Okay, crypt or tomb. All right, well, I know one of the uh, types of adventures is visiting a lost shrine. So I think I'm going to make this more of a, a tomb of something. And hmm. so once known, you know, how does that mean exactly? So I'm going to go with there's a legendary place that's been destroyed. And as, uh, you know, uh, civilized society, you know, the, the men, the, the, the dwarves, the elves are moving into these territories they're they're kind of remapping what used to exist and the party has found out that or maybe they've been hired however you like to run your games that there is this um this ancient tomb of let's say a warlord right and of course now they know about this and this warlord was known to you know uh, have tons of riches of course and was you know buried with his magical armor and sword <laughs> so so the rumors go and the party is going to try to get there and loot it so the first thing we want to do the well the next thing we want to do is kind of have an idea for our map, right? Because if we're going to do this procedurally, we want to look at maps. Now, I have uh, a bunch of maps that I've pulled, but watching me go through maps is going to take a bit. So I'm going to actually cut the video here and I'll come back once I have some selections. Okay, so like we've talked about before, you can jump online and find all kinds of cool maps. You can draw your own maps. Uh, there's also Patreons you can follow that will provide you with maps, all kinds of cool stuff. I generally like to draw my own, even though they're simple. But sometimes I like to get inspiration from things. And since we're going from scratch, uh, I'm going to do that, right? Instead of drawing it myself, I decided to go through. I have a file on my computer, essentially. Whenever I see a cool map, um, you know, that just kind of inspires me, usually when I'm searching for a map for something else and I'm like, oh, I like this map, but not for this, I'll put it in a folder. So I have this map folder. Let me show my screen here. So we can see the maps popping up here. And I'm kind of going to kind of like work my way through them to see which ones I might like. And, you know, uh, spoiler, I already found one that I liked. Um, let's see if I can come to it here, which is this one. Okay, so I like this map for a few reasons. One is that it clearly is some kind of a tomb. But I also like this, uh, these like ziggurat. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big sword and sorcery person. I love the kind of ziggurat -y kind of thing here going on. So this is kind of a compound, though. Like, I can see that there's wagons and there's some outbuildings and stuff like that. So I, I'm not going to use all of that. Uh, so I'm not going to use this map. I'm going to basically use it as a rough inspiration, and I'm going to draw over it with, like we've done before. So I'm going to copy it over into my iPad, uh, and we'll go from there. But before I do that, I want to give credit where credit is due. I, of course, when I grabbed it offline, I couldn't figure out where it was. But doing a simple Google image search, I did find the origin, the origin of this map, and it is 
from the Dungeon of Signs blog. And I will put a link in the description to the blog post that has this map. It does apparently have some kind of uh, adventure with it, but I'm not going to read that because I because <laughs> I don't want to be influenced by um, by that. So Dungeon of Signs, check it out. It's actually a really cool blog. A lot of cool stuff on there, actually. Um, and some adventures I've actually run from this, but never use this map. So, uh, okay. So we've got our map now. Now we're going to go through and kind of work on it. I'm going to put, I've got it on my iPad here. We've done this before. Um, people have asked, I'm using um, a software called Procreate. It's not actually a, a mapping software per se. It's really just made for drawing, but so what, for what we're going to do, it's going to work perfectly. Okay. So I like this map uh, in general. Like I like the, the two map. I don't want it to be too big because we're creating kind of a small uh, scenario here. Um, you want to give a little bit of, uh, I'm going to say this could be running maybe like three hours. So we want a little investigation. We want some time, some encounters, stuff like that going on, but we don't want it to be too huge. I might add a little bit to it, but for the most part, I think it's pretty good. So we're going to first look at this. I like the, the pyramid structure here, the ziggurats, and I can see here, they've got an F and a C. So I'm guessing that means that there's like a secret door or whatever that leads from there and you drop down. That's cool. I like it, but I'm not going to use that there. Um, instead, I am going to have this pyramid structure here. This one be above. Why? Because I like this, right? We've got a little kind of crypt area here with a statue above. And of course, this is, you know, it's got vines and stuff growing on it because it's old. And however many steps we're going to have, we've got it like that, right? I'll make it a little neater after. So we like that. We're going to have a way in there. And then we're going to, again, I'm not going to use this. And I'm not going to use this one because I don't want it to be a whole compound. I just want it to be a single uh, space. What I'm thinking is it's going to basically be this real steep pyramid. So it will be ziggurat, but it got of only a little bit. Like it's going to be hard to climb, aka the thief's going to have to do it probably. And then on top, it's going to be flat. It's going to come down like this. And up here, we're going to have the, you know, the tomb thing. And then also some columns and probably some kind of statue, statuary up there as well. Okay, so that's kind of the shape of it. You're going to have to climb to the top to get inside. Now, if you don't have a thief, they can figure out another way to get up there using rope, whatever, whatever. So once they're up top, they'll be able to access the interior. And through that, they're going to come into this, like this little thing here. I'm going to use like this, and we will basically use the majority of this map, at least the shape of it, because I like it. You've got this one space that you come into. It looks like this is a wall here. I don't like the water inside because that doesn't make sense for me for what I'm doing. But um, this being kind of a solid wall here um, is good. Again, so I'm doing the basic structure here, and I'm going to actually come in and fix this. As usual, um, I try to rough things out first to see if I like it. I don't know if I'll leave that trap there or not, but I did put it there. And of course, we got the secret door. <laughs> I kind of like that if you were to come in and you find that secret door right away, you're probably going to be able to go right to the tomb without messing around too much here. Um, because, hey, why not, right? So that's going to be like our basic structure. If I come in here and sh stop showing that. So what we've got here is we've got this uh, temple area here. And then from here, it's going to lead to here. And then that's going to bring us into our basic tomb, which we'll kind of redraw. So I'm going to take a second to kind of redraw this a little bit nicer. Um, and then we will uh, we'll come back to it. Okay, so I've got the map. Let's see if we get this here. All right, so I made a few changes to it. Um, as noted, I... Uh, drew the, the side view of the pyramid here with the the thing on top. Uh, I'm going to use the, again, the ziggurat section that um, was kind of in the map already. And I added to this a little bit. Let me see if I can show you the original map. Okay, so I added, the, I guess, three rooms. I changed that middle room a little bit because I didn't really like the kind of the corridor wrapping around a couple pit traps. It just wasn't the style for what I wanted for this. So Again, I got some inspiration to give me some basic shapes, and I went from there. Now, what I'm thinking is a couple of things. I want to have the over, you know, the overland part again because it's, because it's basic level, it's second level. I'm not going to make a whole journey to get here per se. But while they're figuring out how to get inside, there should be a chance that um, 
that they could encounter something outside. And in addition to that, um, I very rarely make any kind of dungeon where there's only one way in. So just in case I can't figure it out or whatever. So I've drawn in the upper uh, right-hand corner. There's going to be some tree line there. And if they search around in there, uh, they will find there's a tunnel. So over here is your tunnel. And that tunnel is going to lead in here. So over time, some kind of animal, it has uh, tunneled its way in. So we're going to, you know, find some kind of animal that's going to be living in here because, <laughs> you know, probably probably relatively large. Uh, I mean, it's... It's a basic encounter, so it's not going to be like Umber Hulk, so whatever, we'll look to see what's there. So as normal, what I'll do is I like to just go through the, the monster section, it's not that long, and just jot down any monsters I might use for either section. It will do that first, and then once I have my list of monsters, we'll kind of start filling this out. But I have some ideas, you know, I, I drew in some statues and stuff, so I'm probably going to have living statues. But let's take a quick look at the different monsters, and we'll go from there. Right. If something catches my eye, I will jot it down. Remember that this has been deserted, right? So we're not going to have like bandits. And I mean, you could have Neanderthals, I guess, but we're, you know, it's also underground for the most part. So for the, you know, the underground part, I'm going to stick with things that could likely be getting in and out. And if, you know, undead obviously is going to be the main thing that would be likely be here. Obviously, it's a tomb, but I don't want to make it just full of undead because remember that second level, if they can, the cleric is going to be able to turn skeletons and zombies pretty easily. So they're not going to be a huge threat. And also, you know, that's a little typical. So I'm probably going to do a little, un uh, the main bad guy is going to be undead. He's going to be a white. I probably should just note that down uh, right now while I'm here. The main bad guy or, the, you know, the, 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 the person that occupies the tomb will be a white. But other than that, I might avoid using undead if I can, if I can find other things. Carrion crawler, what would it eat? So I'm not going to do that. Uh... A top ganger can be interesting. Uh, a dragon? No, I don't think so. Um, used dance before, so we'll skip that. Gelatinous cube? No, no, no. Gnomes, halflings, goblins. Hmm. Harpies could be interesting uh, above ground. Let me see. I mean, I guess they could have dug a lair in there, but it, the only thing with harpies though is they try to attract people, and if there's no people around. I don't know. You know, they probably move on. Get, ooh, gray ooze obviously is going to be good. And right underneath it is green slime. Um, you know, hobgoblins. Again, you could have humanoids traveling in this area because it's unknown to civilized man or whatever you want to call it. So you could have hobgoblins and stuff out there. But I think I'll avoid that for now and see if I can find enough other good stuff. Uh, like I said, I definitely want to use living statues. Statues. And they'll be the crystal ones, I think, because uh, those are the lower hit die. Um Although iron are only four hit die. I'll do crystal. I'd rather do multiple. Uh, giant lizards, lankathropes, lizard men. Okay. A lot of my favorite monsters are actually in the expert part of the book. So we'll have to do an expert adventure eventually. Uh, Oak jelly is good though. I do like my slimes and just... Ah! Here is something that could have burrowed its way inside because it's it's big and, and powerful and also um, a good kind of boss monster that's unexpected, an owl bear. Classic D&D &D monster. Okay, that might actually be good for that. Pixies, robber flies. I mean, flies are interesting. Rats, hmm, rust monsters. <laughs> Those are always... Ooh, shadows. Oh, giant shrew could be interesting because you're digging inside. They're only one hit dice as well. Um... And they're different than, than giant rats, you know? Well, shriekers are interesting, um, but probably not. Uh, you know what? I will list skeletons. I have a feeling I won't use them unless I really need to. They might be wandering. Giant snakes are interesting as well, especially for outside. I do like a giant snake. Let me put that up top. I haven't found a lot for outside yet. Of course, the owlbear could be outside as well. That'll be on that list. Giant spiders, we just use those. Sturges are cool, but again, we I don't know how they would be living off. I guess they could be living off wild animals. You know, sturges are good for outside. Got to have sturges at least once in a while. I mean, they're going to, again, outside it's going to be more of a want. Uh, it's spell, spell corrected to uh, storage. So apparently, storage is not a word the spell corrector knows. Doglodites. Oh, wolves for outside. Uh, we got yellow mold. That's also good um, for inside as a possible trap, because basically it's not really a monster. I mean, it's a monster, but it's more of a trap monster. And, of course, the uh, possibility of zombies. Okay. Okay. So I think 
looking at this, that's pretty much all the monsters that I would probably want to use in this location. Um, let's take a quick look. Now, the other thing we want to be aware of is we want to make sure there's enough treasure here. So I've talked about this before. This is a second level dungeon. This is not meant to be uh, multiple, you know, you could probably, you should be able to clear this in one, maybe two sessions if they're slow. So I think that um, there only needs to be about a quarter of the amount of gold that you would need to go up a level in this entire dungeon. So we don't need to have a ton of treasure in here, but we do want to make sure we have enough. I do know that Owlbear's got a pretty good treasure type, I believe, and also the white does, so we should be good. But when we look at the treasure, we'll make sure that's the case. So let's take a quick look at the map. And again, it's fun just to create stuff however you want, but at the same time, you got to consider this is a game, and the, the the players are going to want to, you know, level up and stuff. So, <laughs> so as I was drawing this thing, I came up with an idea already, so I know that I'm going to use it. So up top on the pyramid structure, as noted... It's going to be uh, hard to climb for a non-thief. Also, up top is, so on top, four columns. There'll be a, a sarcophagus and a statue. So the statue is going to have, so on the writing of the sarcophagus, so it's going to be something like um, only the humble mander. And if the party kneels before the statue, it will lower itself into the ground. It'll just lower into the pyramid, a 50-foot drop to the area below if the sarcophagus is opened the entire area surrounding will turn to deep mud for 1d4 rounds comma then turn back to stone so basically your uh, rock to mud spell which i don't think exists uh, at least doesn't exist in basic anyways but I'm um, sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, PCs can pull themselves free with a roll of 3d6 under their strength, comma, or 4d6 under if in plate armor. Okay, because you move a little, you know, it's going to be a little clunkier in plate armor. I know somebody below is going to write a comment and show that video of guys doing flips in plate armor, but relative to not wearing armor at all you're you're going to be slower in plate armor so this is basically a trap right if they get up there and they just try to rip open the sarcophagus and steal whatever's inside which is basically nothing um they will sink into the uh into the uh into the ground you know and that's it so if they don't then they'll get inside i mean it's simple as that to get in the other way in of course like i said is a tunnel so they can do it that way as well and that's basically the top um we'll put wandering monsters down below let's see you know, I think I'm going to eliminate the harpies. Well, you know what? We'll do harpies. Why not? I'm going to make it a a, uh, a D6. And there's also the owlbear um, as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the harpy number one, the owlbear number, number six. And then I'll make uh, giant snakes two, three. And then the wolves will be the most common, four to five. Because that makes the most sense for me. You can also do a 2D6 table if you want i mean for now i'm just gonna do it this way so in the end like you're gonna be more likely to run into the the other uh the other monsters and they'll be the the owlbear will be just one because there's only gonna be one owlbear here um but the harpy will be uh you know as many i think there's one to six is the the normal you know i'll just i'm not gonna put anything out it'll be the normal amount we'll check it out in a second um i'll when i as i flesh this out i'll do that okay and that's it right so wandering monsters check every two turns comma roll of of one on one d6 and again that's gonna if they just had to camp here or whatever you know however you want to handle it, you can deal with that in many different ways so basically that's the top right so they're going to get here you know we'll flush it out wherever um but basically that's the alternate entrance is owlbear den one through three encounter owlbear in tunnel otherwise they can get in okay that's that right that's the top now uh, we've got the trap, which I just I already described. And now let's get into the dungeon proper. So we've got these various monsters here. Um, uh, spaces, rather, and we got our monsters. So let me actually... I'm going to do this. Number one. Let's just do this while I'm here. This is going to be... Uh, we should probably number these things. So we've got... This top area is going to be area one. That's going to be two, which will lead to here. This is going to be three. I'm just going to do them in this order. This is not necessarily by, because I know where I want to put there. 
So area three is going to be in the dungeon proper. That's going to be the Owlbear Den. So again, we'll flesh this out as we go, but that's basically where the Owlbear lives. And however we want to handle that, it could have collected, because uh, it's going to have treasure. So wherever it got the treasure from, we can figure that out and make that up as we go. But that'll be that. Um, this area should be area four. The other way we could do this actually, which might be easier, is we might actually go like this. Let's call this A1, A2, right? Because that's the guy above ground. And then we'll just go um, B for below ground. So B, we're going to make that four, a three, right? We'll leave it three because I already made it three. And let's make this one. That way it's not confusing to people. Okay. So B1, and then we've got, we might as well just do them all now. We're going to go make this one B2. That's B3. We'll make this one B4. And then this is going to be B5, which is basically, that's going to be the crypt of, I put double doors on, so it's going to be the crypt. So my idea here was, again, as I was drawing it, that's usually what happens. You start drawing things, you come up with things, is that each of these areas, the, the numbered areas, um, is going to be... Or the I should say three, two, three, four, and five are going to be covered with tapestries. There's going to be a tapestry hanging there. So there's going to be a hanging. Obviously, B3, that tapestry might be torn down because of the owl bear. And then you're going to be able to just walk into that room. I think I don't I don't want to make this so that's lots of weird like traps and doors and stuff. I think that like it's a tomb and we feel like it's pretty confident that uh, this guy this guy's pretty confident. But I am going to leave some of it to randomness because I like some randomness. So in B1, this is the entrance. There's going to be a, a ceiling uh, tunnel to get in, right? Like a, like a, like a, an entrance, basically. Um, there's going to be a bunch of statues. So statues along the walls made of a dark translucent crystal these are our crystal statues um 1d6 of them will be crystal statues so let's actually just well you know i'll leave it there 1d6 are living statues okay huh, i wrote 1d5 for some reason 1d6 are living statues i'm not playing any call classics here um all right so tapestries you know i'm going to change the map actually as i'm looking at it it makes the most sense to have the tapestries block all of these entrances right so when they come in they're going to see these tapestries basically all right so we've got tapestries uh cover Uh, they cover four exits. Show great deeds of the hero. Cool. Okay, so, you know, um, this way you kind of come into this room, you see all these statues, you know, it's pretty uh, epic. It's a pretty large room, so... You're going to come into the space. The torches aren't going to quite light everything. So you're going to like see the edges of statues. You're going to look at them. There'll be some living statues. Um, so what I probably should do here is... Anyway, we want to give some notes as to how we're going to run this. And I like a little bit of randomness in, in it, personally. So, um, you know, if you... Uh, so roll 1d20 per statue. Per statue. To see... No, roll 1d20 per living statue to determine which uh, which of the 20 they are, period. Um, this will change each day at sunrise. So that way, if they do leave and come back, it'll change, right? So I suppose it makes sense if you see my me typing. All right, so... Um, it's going to change each day at sunrise which ones are living statues any light source that moves within 10 feet of the statue will activate it roll for surprise 
That's normal. Okay. So if you get, if you go too close to the statues, the living ones anyways, they will attack you. So it's just this is really just a uh, you know it's a defensive measure. So that's that room. So now we go to room, and again we've got no treasure yet, so that we've got to go deeper if we're going to do this. So B two. This is going to be one of these rooms. Now let's make a determination here. Let's use the again we wanted to talk about using the procedure of uh, B X. So let's go into our our book. Now let's use the procedure. Let's see what we got. Stock a dungeon. So we're going to roll d6 to see what's in the room. Three. Trap. Okay. And is there treasure? We're going to roll another d6. Three again. Uh, roll a three on a trap room. No. So this is literally just a trap room uh, in B2. So we're going to put a trap in here. Uh, let's see what we got here. We got room traps. Fog looks like poison gas, but harmless. Pit. Ceiling block falls, pendulum blade, shoot. Hmm, let's put, okay, let's go back to that. Because let's see what else is in this place before we do this. B3 we know is the owlbear den, so we already decided that. Remember, you place the things you want to place, and then you roll randomly for the rest. So you don't have to roll for every room. And again, if you roll and you don't like what you get, you could always change it. This is really supposed to be for inspiration. But, uh, you know, I like the idea of going through the procedure. Of course, we know in room five is going to be the white, too. So B4 is the other one we're going to roll for. Let's see what we get here. One, which is a monster. And two is treasure. Okay, so we get a monster and treasure. So monster and treasure. Now, again, it's B4, so it has to be a reasonable this monster could be here. Let's see. So I've got... This is not going to be a white, so one, two, it won't be that, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight if we don't count the ones I won't, wouldn't put in there. So let's see what's in here. Three. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, there's an ochre jelly in here. <laughs> okay. All right, so ochre jelly is in B4. I think a lot of the, the jellies and stuff do not have treasure, so we'll we'll deal with that in a second. So we're going to ochre jelly, and... Let's look what the treasure is for an ochre jelly. Again, I believe it's nothing. Okay, so ochre jelly, treasure type, no. So we'll roll as if for an empty room. The owlbear treasure type is C. So, okay. And the white, we'll check as well since we're gonna be here. Oop, ah, I got everything. And B5 is a white. I'm just gonna do this while I'm here. I think they had B, because I think I looked at it earlier. I'll scroll down here. The white has B, yep, treasure type B. Okay, so since the Oka Jelly has no treasure by itself, we're going to go here, and we're going to look at um, empty rooms. And I'm going to consider this the dungeon level 2 because I'm writing this for a second level party, which means that we're going to definitely have silver pieces. So D12 times 100, 5, so 500 silver pieces. And there is a 50% chance that there'll be gold. So I'll just roll D10. 5, so there's gold. Uh, let's see, D6 times 100, 6, 600 gold pieces, oh, 10% chance of gems, nope, 5% uh, chance of jewelry, nope, and 8% chance of one magic item, nope, okay, so, they're, <laughs> yeah, they should probably not fight the ochre jelly if they can avoid it, but we'll, you know, we'll put a chest in there or something so that it seems like there's some value. Um, all right, so we don't have a lot of treasure in here yet. So this is, again, something we're going to have to really pay attention to. Um, so B2's got a trap and no treasure in that room. So you know what I'm going to use in here? Even though it's listed, I believe, as a trick. I like the idea of... Um, yeah, exactly. Shifting block to close off corridor. So I think what's going to happen with B2 is when they enter the room, sliding block closes off passageway uh, must roll percentile to move block equal to your strength core up to Three PCs try at once. Okay. 
each try takes one turn. After, let's see, d4 plus one turns, air turns sour, and must make a save versus death each turn or pass out after 24 hours. Death is short. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that's a trap. <laughs> I know it's a trick, but that feels like a trap to me. And again, we're going to fancy up these rooms and make them, you know, something, a reason why people would go in there, tapestries and stuff like that uh, as we go. Right now, I'm just kind of blocking out what's going to go on. And B5 is going to be the white. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a wandering monsters for in here. And again, I'm going to look through this. Um, the white wouldn't be wandering because he's trapped. Uh, Gray Ooze, Green Slime, they could wander. I suppose the statues could wander. Um, the Ochre Jelly could wander, so could the owl bear. But I've got other things here. The yellow mold doesn't wander, so we'll get rid of that. I don't know where the zombies would be, to be honest with you. So I'm going to actually remove the um, zombies and skeletons. You know what we can do? We can add an, uh, niches. So we'll add, which is actually, oh, you know, we'll put them in this room. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to the map, and I'm going to add, I'm going to add some burial uh, nooks, basically, in these walls. And these might be, like, the warlords, like, soldiers or whatever. I'm not going to add a ton of them, but I'll, you know, I'll make this corridor basically that. And that, that's where the skeletons and stuff can come from. And you know what we'll do is we'll say that there's... Um, now we're going to have to label that area. Now we're creating a new area, right? This is going to be B6. Okay. In this corridor. Because again, I mean, not that everything has to make sense, but, you know, why not make it make a little bit of sense if we can? B6, burial niches... Each has a skeleton or a zombie. Can be searched. Takes one turn. Roll to see what is found. Boom. We'll make a little D6 chart here. One through three is going to be rusted gear. No value. Four is going to be silver buttons or ornaments worth. D6 times 10 silver pieces. Five will be um, gold buttons or ornament worth D6 times 100. Now we'll do 10 gold pieces. And then six will be. Um, Buried with purse of uh, D6 times 100 gold pieces. There we go. So it's worth digging around if they want to deal with that. Cool. All right. So let's deal with the white now. Okay. The white is going to be basically the hero and main treasure stash. Okay. So room closed with double doors can heavy comma not locked can be opened with knock spell or a combined strength of let's say four average men so we'll say 40. we'll go back to here so you guys can see what i'm doing sorry combined <laughs> just see all my combined strength so i do this sometimes where essentially it just takes a certain amount of strength to open it right instead of making it random it is just 40 points of strength will open it so uh three very strong characters two kind of uh, no no two strong two two strong characters could not open it no matter how strong they are but three strong characters could four average ones five that are weaker you know you, enough people will be able to open it if they try hard enough um and then inside, we're going to have uh, Aerialize, oops, on Stone Slab, comma, Awakens when the doors are open, will fight until destroyed. 
Okay, so here's where we're going to look at his stuff, because if he has any magic weapons or whatever, we're going to want to put that on there. Now, there's going to be rumors that the White has it, but, you know, whether or not he actually has it, we'll find out. So let's jump in and let's look at some treasure here, because I'm also going to do the Owl Bear down in a second. So let's just go through and make sure we have enough treasure in this place to make it worthwhile. So this is the treasure in this room. Now, I know that I've said in the past that I don't like, typically, like, you fight an end boss and there's all the treasure, but I think in this kind of situation, it makes sense. So, and we do have some of the treasure scattered about. So it's not like they got nothing unless they kill this guy. And remember, white is a level draining undead. So white is very, very tough. Um, so this is going to be a worthwhile fight for a party um, <laughs> if they can get out of it alive. Okay, so we've got 3,000 copper pieces, 6,000 silver pieces, 3,000 gold pieces, and four gems uh, with the value of, a, uh, looks like about uh, 2,600 gold pieces. Now, the thing is, there's only going to be one white. So when we look over here at the treasure, uh, the monster rather, what we see is there could be a total of one to eight whites in the lair. So what you're supposed to do here when you're figuring out treasure is we need to determine like about, you know, um, how many. So basically you should get about an eighth of it. So because this is the main boss, I'm going to kind of err a little bit on the, the high side because of the fact that I didn't roll maximums on things because you got to factor all that in too. So. What I'm going to say is I'm going to say he's going to get about a quarter because that's that's uh, that seems reasonable. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just rough this out. So a quarter of this would be, uh, you know, copper is pretty worthless anyway. So I'll just give a thousand copper. That's actually a third. But um, a quarter of this would be uh, about 2200. Again, I'm just kind of roughing it. A quarter of this would be like 750 or 700, we'll say. The four gems... I'll just give one of the gems. So well, actually, I'll, I'll get total the total up, 2,600, so I'll make one gem worth 600. Okay, so maybe he wasn't as <laughs> awesome as a warlord as, as everyone thought, right? And that's basically in with the white. So again, it's only one white, and to, to be honest with you, a white, while well, it's three hit dice, I mean, you could very easily um, roll, you know, like, you can kill this thing in one round if you if you're a party and you get to get to jump on it. So it probably will not be hard to kill the white. They might end up losing a level though. So now the owl bear, on the other hand, you know they're coming to this place looking to fight the uh, the the uh, some undead, right? They're going to come into this place thinking undead. But in fact, the owl bear is probably actually going to be the toughest fight in here, and it's going to have probably the most treasure. So let's look at the owl bear's treasure. But again, once again, the owl bear is alone. So I'm going to have to go into this treasure and see how many owl bears are normally in a in a pack and we will adjust one to four so again about a quarter of the uh the treasure so let's come in here and look at the owl bear and we're going to drop the treasure down to about a quarter so that's a thousand silver pieces a thousand electrum that was easy and then we've got three jewelries let's get a total on the jewelry and then we'll go from there um, remember, jewelry is 3d6 times 100. So, 3, 7, and 2 more is 9. So, that's 900. 1, 3. That's kind of a cheap piece. Oh, and 6, so 9, another 900. And finally, last piece, 4, oh, 10. Ooh, 15. Okay, so 1,500. Okay, so it looks like we got 1,500, and we've got 1,800, so that's 20, no, 30, uh, 3,300. Yeah, 3,300. So again, divided by 4 is going to be roughly uh, 850. We'll say 850. I like there being more than one, though. So actually, I'll just go one, one jeweler. One, we'll say necklace. Worth. Oops. Worth 850 gold pieces. All right. Now there's a little tidying up still to be done here, but what I want to do before we do that is I want to just look at this and see where we're at gold piece wise. Because if it's too low, then I'm going to have to just bump the gold up a little bit because. And we can add a little more danger, you know, if we if we want. But, um, like, I can put a monster in the, the room with the trap or some treasure in there. I mean, or some, you know, treasure in the trap room. But let's just see what we got, just roughly. Um, assuming they get it all. Oh, before I do this, 
Because when I talk about this, just in case you haven't, this is the first time you've seen this or seen me talk about it. Um, well, what I generally like to do is when I'm looking at the, the treasure, I'm going to look at, I'm going to go all the way to, the, I'm in the BX book again. I'm going to go here to the beginning and I'm going to look. Because they are second level, I'm going to look at the average class, which is a fighter. And a fighter needs, it'll, it'll, they'll have, if they're on second level, they'll, they'll have um, 2,000 experience points. So to get to third level, they only need 2,000 experience points. Now, what that means is, you know, 2,000 more experience points. So what that means is that we want to give roughly uh, enough for a party of four to level up within a few adventures. But since this is only a single adventure, I think if we put enough in there for like one of the characters to level up, so 2,000 gold pieces, that should be plenty. Figure that the characters are only going to recover about half of it. Uh, so we want to put about 4,000 gold pieces worth of treasure in here. And if we do that, then we should be okay with giving enough treasure. So let's just take a quick look and see what we got in here. So we want about 4,000. I mean, okay, so that's 100, and that's 500, so that's 600. And then we've got uh, about 1,450. Then we've got about 2,000, yeah, uh, 2,050 roughly, right? And then we've got another 1,300 there is going to be 30, uh, 33, uh, another 200. So yeah, we're a little shy of 4,000, but I think that's probably fine. Uh, because again, they're they're not going to necessarily get it all, but they'll get a decent amount of it. And there might be, um, it was one of the, oh no, I already added that up. Okay, yeah, that's it. So that's it, right? We've got the treasure. Um, oh, and also they, they can dig in into the uh, the skeletons. So I think we have enough treasure in here to give us uh, what we want. So let's do a quick, because I was going to do this before, and then I spun back over. Let's do a quick Wandering Monster chart. So Wandering Monster, and then we'll go, we'll do a, fi a finish up here. Okay, so again, 1d6 every two turns on a one roll or encounter. Okay, and then we're going to go um one two three and i'm gonna say here from room one so this way like if they do encounter a living statue there and they you know it's going to be from that room it's not just wandering around aimlessly uh okra jelly four is going to be from room oops i know the oozes and stuff don't generally move very much but when you're encountering an ooze as a wandering monster you don't necessarily want to treat it like they're, um, the ooze is actually wandering, right? It's just there. And maybe you just didn't see it before because it was stuck on the wall. Uh, Okra jellies, yeah, they move, They have a move of, of 30. So they're they're not particularly fast, but they do move. Let me just check the ooze as well. I know green slime doesn't move, but again, it's like stuck to the ceiling. Gray ooze, it moves very slowly. And green slime, it does move a little bit, but very slowly. So again, they're basically, if you encounter the gray ooze or the green slime, they're just there. Um... Uh, okay, there's the owl bear, right? And that's from room. Now, if this was, if you were going to use this um, as like a local dungeon that they could go back and forth to, I would not be, he I wouldn't hesitate to increase the number of owl bears and stuff, and just you know have them repopulate and stuff like that. Um, I don't think that's really a problem. Uh, shadow. Oh, look, we added those extra uh, niches so that we could have these other wandering monsters, but it looks like that. Uh, we don't really need to because, you know, then let me look at this. Let's not have the ochre jelly move because that seems kind of silly. So instead, I'm going to put giant shrews. And, you know what? No skeletons or zombies. Like I said, I don't, at second level, they become, at first level, I love skeletons because it gives the cleric a good chance of turning them, but not supersonic. And, you know, they're not super tough to fight, but. At second level, skeletons are going to just be, uh, you know, not a big deal to, to fight. So, and plus, when they're digging through those crypts, seeing all the skeletons and stuff, they're going to be freaked out by it. And if none of them are actual skeletons, that's got works for me. So, all right, let's go through this thing one more time, and then we will wrap up. And I'd love to get some comments below. Uh, I'm going to pretty this up and make it available, of course. Okay, so up above, we've got the pyramid structure, right? 
that you're going to basically start the party more or less in the area. You can add however you're doing in your campaign. You could obviously have the trip to it. You could have it be nearby. They could be part of a caravan, whatever you like. But they're going to basically find this thing, uh, hopefully with some rumors so they know that they want to go inside. Uh, it's going to be tricky to climb on top. But if they search around, you know, um, they can find another entrance in. Remember, you've got the entrance here. And you've also got the secondary entrance, which, of course, is also an exit, right? Um, once they get through, they will end up, you know, if they take the, the main entrance, they're going to end up in this room here, which is going to be full of these statues. It, it, the room is dark, remember? And you're just going to see these glints of these statues. You're going to see the tapestries hanging. If they get real close to the statues to investigate them, a certain number of them will, will come to life, basically. They're living statues, right? As they explore around in room B4, they're going to find the before has the ochre jelly and that will be, you know, kind of in this maybe spread out all over the room and there'll be some kind of, uh, uh, maybe a table with, uh, let's, let's do this now. So as we're looking at this, because remember we have 500 silver pieces, 600 gold pieces. So let's make this room uh, a large table. Fills this room piled with gold and silver the floor glistens and undulates with an ochre jelly okay you know this way we've got the ochre jelly in there we got the table we got the gold simple they, they look at it they see treasure they see the monster they want to kill the ochre jelly do they want to run well, that's up to them how do they want to handle it do they want to try to make their way to the table without touching the ochre jelly we can figure that out right so that's B4. Now, if they go into B2, again, there's got to be something in here that's going to draw them into that trap, right? So a large table. Let's let's be let's keep things consistent, right? A large table sits covered with rotten food and dust. The food sits upon tarnished silver trays not really silver okay because they have no value so that way they'll come in there hopefully to get the, the the silver trays trap right um if they go into b into three this is the owl bears la lair so let's see for this one we're going to say tapestry uh covering this hallway is torn the room beyond smells of animal refuse and stale air in the room what once was a large table has been shattered and formed into a grotesque nest. And then of course the owlbear's in there. Okay, and then finally, well, okay, no, B6, right? They're gonna go through B6 next, which is this hallway. Well, maybe not, I mean, but let's say they go this direction. B6 is gonna be, okay, so let's look at B6 next because I feel like that's, uh, that's the logical thing to do. This is going to be um, this hallway is lined with burial niches, each covered with a simple clay cover. Okay. And then inside is the, the skeletons. And then finally, the, the final room, which is where the hero is, it's closed doors, heavy, locked. The dock spell opens up. Hero lies on a stone slab. Um, and he'll fight. Um, so I'm going to add a few things. Fights with a vicious looking sword. Mama wears rusted mail. Several rotted chests lie about the room as well as skeletons of what may have been 
servants in life. Okay, and they won't come to life or anything. I mean, I guess you could do that if you want. Um, and that's that. So we've got basically a real simple setup here. This should be able to be run as a, as a one shot, um, added into the campaign. It's going to be a little bit of a distance because, again, we're exploring new lands. So you can either just narrate that they've traveled a few days and they're there, or you can play it out, you know, as travel. It, as noted, when you're running BX and you're running the B part of it, they kind of make an assumption that you're just going to go to the dungeon and not play the wilderness campaign. But if you want to play that part out, obviously that's really fun and cool. Just keep in mind that in BX, you, you don't heal when you're on the road. And if you're talking second level characters, even if there's a cleric in the group that's second level, they're only going to have one healing spell a day. So if you make a bunch of encounters on the road and people get beat up, they're going to be very weakened when they walk into this. And this is designed, you know, to be a challenge for the party. So, you know, make sure that if you do have them travel to this location and they do encounter something that you, you make sure you balance it out so they don't end up getting so beat up that it's not worth them exploring this at all. In any case, let me know what you guys think. I'll flesh this out a little bit more. More and more, I'm going to take these adventures and get them prepped so I can share them with you guys. Also, I will be working on the rest of the... I mean, I'll roll random each time, but eventually I'll do them all. There's 10 uh, possible adventure hooks, as they say. So we'll walk through each of them, and we'll create a little adventure and have some fun playing it. So if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, ring the bell so you get the notifications, all that other goodness, and I will see you next time.